Conference USA showdown here at home where they've won their last 12 in a row. It's Conference USA football, CBS Sports Network on Facebook. Watch the Owls of FAU playing host to the thundering herd of Marshall. Now it's an opportunity today for you to be involved with our broadcast. A very young player, but one that's making some noise around the country. Yeah, very young player, only a red shirt freshman, but he leads the nation with 17 total touchdowns, 15 of those on the ground. And the thing you like about, he's a slasher. He's gonna slash between the tackles. He's got the speed to get to the outside. And just keep in mind, he gets better and better each and every game because a very inexperienced runner. Then with this quarterback, they can throw the ball as well with Marshall. Grant Wells comes into this game ninth in the nation in yards per game. He can really sling it down the field. Got a great group of wide receivers on the outside. Has had some interceptions lately, but you know what? He's gotten much more efficient as of the last game. Absolutely beautiful. 71, just partly cloudy. Wind may be a factor, just, but just at 14, 16 miles per hour. Beautiful day here in what they like to call paradise. Yeah, it certainly is paradise. And like you said, I was excited. It's, I live in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. I was hoping to get down to Florida and see some sunshine. Did not see that until late this afternoon, but now it's perfect football weather. Jaden Harrison back deep to receive the opening kickoff. Gets it at about the one-yard line and takes it down the right side of the field across the 20. They can get explosive plays across the 40, across midfield. He's off to the races. It's going to be a touchdown. The thundering herd kicking things off with an opening drive touchdown. Well, I tell you what, I mean, you want to start fast? You talk to your players about going on the road. We already talked about the implications for this game. That's the way you do it. You know, we saw a viral video earlier this year of a fake reverse with Rasheen Ali. Now, this one's just straight up the gut. It's just a, a middle return. Everybody gets a hat on a hat, and you see that lane open wide up. I think you and I could have ran through that. I don't think I had the speed now of Harrison to get down there, but already 7-7 here on Facebook. Big time Conference USA matchup. Both teams coming in at 3-1. Western Kentucky trying to get to 4-1 today. Marshall still has Western Kentucky later on as Harrison on the return across the 25 to the 40. Still on his feet. They finally bring him down just shy of midfield. And the next drive here for Marshall will begin on the 49 yard line you can't always fall on the quarterback the receivers have to take some responsibility as well ball on their own 49 and they'll fake the handoff to ali to start this off back to pass as well as fires left side and that one is complete to willie johnson and he's brought down just shy of the 31 yard line as we're on shadid ahmed as well he's one of those guys that's super dynamic in space with the clap the fire to the right side that pass complete to corey gamage gamage Two receptions last week for 25 yards, but he's up there in yardage as well. 46 receptions on the year. He's getting second down here and about two. Wells hands it off here. Ali gets some room, gets the first down out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. And his matchup against Jacob Cowing last week from UTEP and did an outstanding job of one of the best receivers in the conference. They'll put Ahmed in motion, the handoff to Ali. And I called him a violent runner earlier in the booth when we were just talking about him. And he does it right there. He loves to lower that shoulder. He loves to take those long extra strides. He does another one there. Just have some designed run plays where you can feel that contact. Obviously, you don't want to take any major risks with some big hits, but that's all by design to get in the flow of the game. And off the forward and a great tackle there in the open field by Joshua Bowers, bringing him down down in the backfield loss of some yardage there for the owls that's joshua bowers again we just talked about him on the field for injury causing that potential fumble that we took a look at. well there's bowers at the top of the screen he's an unblocked player but he still has to make a play in space which is awfully hard for a guy like i'll spread it out here larry mccammon in the backfield as ford is on the bench four receivers here on a third down on a long eight perry looks steps up trying to escape and finally brought down good pressure there from the defense owen porter bringing him down for marshall well and it was elijah alston that got to the quarterback first he came up the middle and you're going to see him come looping around to get the pressure and it's that initial pressure is what caused perry to step up 
to have to make a, a second decision, and then you see the rest of the defensive players converge. Uh, but he came in and made an immediate impact, so interesting to see uh, if he ends up coming back. We hope he's not ill, we hope he's okay, as uh, Marshall and Allen first down. Here's Ali taking it across midfield. There is a penalty marker down as Ali's down the sideline and takes it into the end zone. It's going to be called a touchdown here, but hold on, folks. Penalty marker down at the 30-yard line, so very likely this one's coming back. And they're going to call him for an illegal block downfield, cutting the linebacker, and I don't even think that linebacker was going to be a factor in this play because it's a it's a wide toss to the right and they had a hat on a hat so this one comes all the way back to the 15 yard line first down here for marshall It'll be first and 20. wells back to pass pass complete to damage here on the left side across the 20. he's going to run out of, out of bounds at about the 22 yard line and so yeah slow it down and take control here on second down, Perry trying to get up in the pocket, and he's brought down again. This time, Owen Porter involved in the tackle. Also there is Jamari Edwards. Well, Owen Porter now with the second sack of the game, and he's going to come off from this left side, and everybody's just going to kind of converge on the outsides. It's a multitude of guys that get into Perry. But you're going to see... Owen Porter, the first to his running backs coach, of like, you got to finish more. Drive those legs, fall forward a little bit more often. Garrett Morrell with the reception there and run out of bounds after picking up about eight yards. Well, check out this finish here. Every time these, these little corners and secondary guys see a big guy coming, they mash into that line of scrimmage and just pick up the first down. And he does. Ball at the 38-yard line of the herd. Wells fires pass over the middle. Is complete. Caleb McMillan coming up with the reception. T.J. Young in on the coverage. And another first down here for the herd as they try to change the tempo a little bit here. Yeah, now they need to go on the offensive with the speed at which they get these plays in and out. This is a Florida Atlantic defense. They don't substitute a lot. So a lot of these guys up front can get gassed out because they don't have a ton of depth. Ahmed's the man in motion. And up to Ali, works it outside across midfield. Gets inside the 40 and about the 35-yard line. Another big pickup there. A gain of about 14 yards there. Kiki Leroy in on the tackle. Finally get Ali out of bounds. Just watch the blocking out here, and then he's going to take it right in between. And watch the patience, though. It's the patience. He's throttling, throttling, and then he hits the hole, and he turns on the Jets to pick up a first down. He came floating down to take away that flat. There's no chance for any yards after catch. Wells fires, and it's complete again. Johnson on the reception. Gilbert gets him out of bounds. They need a spark. They need something to get some confidence. This could be two-down territory. Third down and about 12. Wells looks, fires, pass is complete. Damage has it inside the 10. And Romain Mungin, Smoke Mungin finally able to bring him down, but a big play. Ali finds some room, squeaks forward. He's denied, then he gets in, keeps it going, touchdown. His 18th total touchdown of the season, his 16th on the ground, and just like that, Marshall is an extra point away from reclaiming the lead. Well, this is what his running backs coach was talking about, finish. He's strong, he's durable, he's got great feet. Now, when you get into contact in tight spaces, keep your legs going. Get those knees driving. Get those knees up and lean forward. It all comes into fruition right there. Frank Absolutely. team taking on UTEP tonight. FAU beat last week, and UTEP's had a great season. They were undefeated in conference play going in. Uh, so USA has, ha has some really good programs right now. Yeah, they, they really do. And, and UTSA, I don't think, got enough love for the season that they've had from the college football playoff committee. Pass complete to 
or Gamage there. Quarterback, coach, offensive coordinator. That's the first thing they're going to har harp on is just take care of the football and ball security. Hand off to Ford, who's back in. Mentioned left the game earlier. He did not start. Marshall took the opening kickoff, 99 yards for the touchdown. It was Jaden Harrison who did that. And he fell behind 13-7. Able to come back at a touchdown from Rasheen Ali. His 18th of the year, 16th on the ground. And now Thundering Herd football here. First down and a pass over the middle is complete to Garrett Morrell. Gets some room across the 35, stays down the sideline, finally brought out of bounds just shy of the, well, actually just across the 40-yard line at the 41. Well, they tried to get Rasheen Ali on the wheel route. That was the, the primary target. And then when that wasn't there, he found the guy going over the middle for a big, big gain and a first down. Pass to the right side complete. Another first down to Ali. Gets it into FAU territory. Well, take a look. Here's going to be Ali. He's going to go. That's the route they're looking for. Now, this is the route they end up hitting. But great job by Wells because they put two potential targets in the same area. It's not a hard read for him. Once he sees the corner drop off and take that wheel route, he knows he's got another player three or four yards. He was going to walk his way into the end zone. Hayball will punt to Willie Johnson here. It has to come up, grab it at the 45, has some room, takes it left side across the 40. And his vision takes him out of bounds at about the 30-yard line, but a great special teams play. It was a punt that was a little shorter than where Willie Johnson was stationed, but great presence of mind to come up on the ball and able to make a play to that left side. Yeah, a poor, poor punt. There's just no hang time. Leaves the coverage unit hanging out to dry, and you make one guy miss, one gunner miss, and you can see that left wall that was built on the phenomenal as well. Ali in the backfield, three receivers here. Fake the handoff, pass right side here to Gaines. He gets across the 25, he slips the tackle and gets to the 21-yard line. A, a little bit of a block on the outside to see what he can do, but you see this big man stop his feet. He makes one guy miss, two guys miss, a high tackle. You see the strength, and then he falls forward and actually picks up a lot more yards than I think anybody was expecting. Big opportunity here for the Thundering Herd to add to their lead going into the locker room. Here's Wells. Gets it to Ali. Bounces outside the 20. Finds some room to the 10. The 5 to the pylon. Touchdown. I mean, just phenomenal blocking up front by everybody involved. I'm not on the field for injury. I tell you what, watch number 63. Watch him just go to work out here on the perimeter. It's going to be an off-tackle play. He gets that block. He keeps his feet going. Gets another block, just enough to get the linebacker. And when you seal everything off and open up everything right there on that outside zone, and you get a line first touchdown, found the crease to the outside, and stuck his left foot in the ground to get vertical and score his second touchdown of the day. Jaquan Burton on the return here for the Owls. And I'll tell you what, that last drive and touchdown here for Marshall has really kind of taken some of the energy out of FAU Stadium. When you commit to the run game here in the second half, these little play-action pass plays opens up everything in the middle. And there's a run there on first down from the 33. And that was wide open because of the play action inside. Third down at 11 here. Perry looking, and he just gets swallowed up and brought down all the way back at the 45-yard line. Rodney Kroom, Kobe Cumberland there to sandwich him up. Well, it's Rodney Kroom who, who had an opportunity to play before. This time, it was him that gets out on the outside for another pressure. Didn't get paid off the first time. This time, it's a good hat in the hands, good separation, and he was the one that got there first. Highly skilled receiver, 
Your job is to catch the football first, and he has not done that a few times. Four drops already for Ahmed, as Wells has to escape and fire, and Ali is there. The safety blanket gets across the 30 and picks up the first down and more. Gets near the 40-yard line before Kiki Leroy able to get him out of bounds. Well, it's awfully nice when you've got a, a guy as talented as Rashid Ali. Rashid Ali, that can be your, your outlet, your, your check down. He checks waits for the blitz to come it doesn't come so he gets himself out there and, and to be a pass catching threat and he picks up the first down himself four receivers out there for the herd first down wells looking finds ali in the flat and just skips out of bounds right at the 45. so here's four receivers here Wells on third down, here comes the rush, fires, and it's Ali over the middle, across midfield and more. Across the 40, dives forward to the 35. And another check down play, Ali there. Doesn't get much. Well, again, let's take a look at, there's the blitz from the nickel spot, that slot, and see how everything's just wide open. It was the perfect concept. You know, Coach Huff talked about going in the locker room how they wanted to stop the penalties, and he's looked like he's got two intentional ones trying to get. That's a great punt there from Lefevre, and they're going to down him right at the one-yard line. I'm out on the field for media. See how he just snuck in there, leaned forward between those two tacklers and got the first down. Pass to that left side is complete. They just needed a couple of yards there, but weren't able to get much. Hopefully just gotten the wind knocked out of him, and, and Gilmore can come back in this game very soon. The 107 from Ford already a career high during his time here at FAU. Takes the carry again down the sideline. He goes across the 30, cuts it back upfield, loses the football. Marshall trying to dive on top of it. And Ford with his hands on his head, no signal just yet. Trying to get some room, but it converge on it. It is Marshall football. Corey McCoy, the one that comes up with it for the Thundering Herd. A big play. Boy, he just came with the haymaker from the sky. He took three Time steps. Out on the it's a third down and four here for the Herd. They lead it 21-13. Delayed handoff here to Ali, trying to give that little bit of extra effort, and I think he got there, he did. They'll move the change as he pick up a first down across the 35-yard line. Well, they brought a similar blitz in that same slot nickel position. This time, it was not a pass that was going to get... You're going to see the blitz come this way, but it's going to be just enough for Ali to get up the field, break one tackle, and pick up that first down. So the drive continues here for Marshall. Wells firing long right side. He's got him in. Johnson's got it down the sideline. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Marshall. Well, what a brilliant concept. They flood the right offensive side. And they're going to throw some cheese at the defense, thinking that there's going to be a player in the flat on a little bit of a swing pass. And that's going to be just enough to freeze the secondary. You're going to see him come right out here. But it's going to be this motion out here to the flat that's going to freeze this defense. You see that inside slot defender bite on that swing pass. And that left Willie Johnson all alone up the sideline. 65 yards for the good. touchdown to the house for Willie Johnson, extends this lead for Marshall now to 28 to 13. He had a lot of support to come watch him score a pretty dynamic and explosive play. I beg your pardon, it was 56 tickets for Willie Johnson's family and friends for this game. That request was made on Tuesday. <laughs> well, I think you've got 56 very, very happy people in the stands. 
from the issue saying that we have to throw and that's going to play into Marshall's defense's favor. So here's Wells on first down, fires again, finds Johnson at midfield, finds some room across the 40, takes a hit, and he's brought down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Well, once again, they're just splitting this defense, and he's going to find him in this in this little void. It's not a very big that window. That's the end of the third quarter. Watch how quickly that ball is thrown in the small window that he had to throw into. He was even high and away for Marshall unanswered as they have uh, kind of pulled away from this thing. As we see Rasheen Ali, he's got two touchdown runs. That's the first. Here's the second at the end of the first half. So that's the 14 unanswered. And then here is Willie Johnson. Getting Scott free up the sideline and showing off his speed. 21 unanswered now for Marshall as again, they have made this a, a one-dimensional game for FAU's offense. Ali in the backfield here on first and 10. Ahmed gets some room across the 30, takes a hit at the 25, and gets near the first down marker. Might be a yard shy there. It's Shane Chuchi. Aiming to try to kick the field goal, and look, they're setting up at the line of scrimmage. And they try to get some movement. Just get someone to jump off sides. There's a penalty marker. It may have been on Chase Lasseter, number seven. I'm not 100% sure, but the... All sides on the defense, number seven, with contact. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Wow! What a play there from Charles Huff. That's a brilliant call. You know, you know you're within that five yards, so you know that they can just get them to be a little bit undisciplined, to, to get them to be ultra aggressive on a block attempt that they were going to try to go for. And they hurried up, came right under the, the center, tried to snap the ball. They weren't going to snap the ball. The whole intention was not to snap the ball. It's just to get them to jump off sides, and they do it. And Jeremy Springer, the special teams coordinator for Marshall, came up and gave... Charles Huff, the big attaboy. There's a pass over the middle, complete to Johnson. Finds some room and gets inside the 10. It'll be first and goal for the herd. Jordan Helm able to be the last line of defense there for the Owls. Well, and I don't understand exactly the mentality of this FAU defense right now. They're extremely deflated. You know, they're going to see Johnson again in the slot. Number two receiver. He's just going to sit it down. There's no, no reason to go through the middle of the field. You see everybody void that area. Just sit it down, make an easy throw for FAU. A chance to reclaim the momentum here as Perry steps up and he's brought down. So he tried to make something happen there. Looked like he had some time and then the pocket just collapsed on it. Still only second down though. Perry's going to take it himself. Looked like it was his design run there and he gets maybe a yard or two I think this is just something short to get fourth and manual because I think you have to go for it here on fourth down if they don't make it Perry escapes and rolls left fires got a man again and that pass is incomplete thrown a little bit too high for Burton Brandon Drayton among those in on the coverage there well they're, they're gonna bring the punt team out but I think this is again the likelihood that you're seeing the double move there again i did i just think that you should have gone for something short maybe picked up a first down if you both run after catch and then i think they have to go for it so it goes first and 20. A little bubble screen action and breaking free and getting some extra yardage there and staying in bounds, Caleb McMillan with the reception there for Marshall. Second down and four here for the hurt. Harrison, the man in motion. Hand off Ali. And he takes some chunk of the grass with him as he gets to the 40-yard line and picks up the first down here for Marshall. We'll take a look at Alex Millette. He's going to be the center on this block. Now, he just got added to the Remington watch list for best offensive lineman in the country. And, you know, he's fantastic 
and the way that he can play out in space. You see how he sold that, got his shoulder. And let the fifth-year senior out of Suwannee, Georgia. 6'4", 294 as they give it to Ali, and he gets across midfield, keeps those legs churning, and gets into Florida Atlantic territory at about the 46-yard line. Well, there he is again, Alex. You talk about him, just the way, the violence of which he runs. And it's evident when you turn the tape on, and it's very evident when you're watching it in person that when he gets downhill, he runs with bad intentions. It's It's got to take more than an arm tackle. Third down and three. Perry looks, tries to escape, and he's brought down by, by from behind. The sack party continues for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And then you want a banana back. So this rush is going to come here to flush him out. Now he's going to run the hoop. He's just asked, just run the hoop on the outside. Because if we do our job on the inside, we're going to flush him out. So just run the hoop, a speed rush to the outside. You're going to eventually get to the quarterback. It'll be second down and 10 here. Nikosi Perry fires over to that right side. Pass complete there to James Charles. And with one second, they do not get a playoff. They'll pass to that left side. And they'll try to keep this one alive. This is Burton leaving it back. And that's going to do it here from Boca Raton as Nikosi Perry goes down with it. The 12-game home winning streak here for the Owls has come to an end. Marshall's win streak extends to four, and they're now tied with Western Kentucky atop the Eastern Division of Conference USA with four and one records with a meeting later on on November the 27th, just a few weeks from today.